Today we're talking about knowing your nozzle CFM instead of GPM. Hi, my name is Matt Hinkle with Box Farm Training, and today we're talking about nozzle CFM versus GPM. CFM being cubic feet per minute of air instead of GPM, which is gallons per minute of water. Uh, so that's a really important thing for us to discuss as firefighters because we don't really understand the implications of our nozzle use unless we really understand the air movement and pressurization and several other things. So we're actually seeing the Fire Safety Research Institute, UL, starting to conduct studies on air, air entrainment. So that's one of the research projects that's coming out. The data is going to be out really soon. We're interested in seeing what that shows us. But we already know some preliminary data that's already been done through backyard testing and some other researchers like Jerry Knapp. And that basically shows us how much air can be moved by a nozzle. And right now we know that smoothbore nozzles flow a tremendously uh, a, a lot less air than a fog nozzle, or a fog nozzle being used on a 30 degree or a full fog type pattern. And that research already showed that fog, fog or combination nozzles can already move upwards of 6,000 cubic feet a minute of air, where a smoothbore nozzle or a fog or combination nozzle used on a straight stream move very little air. And you probably already knew that because you've done hydraulic ventilation or something other, uh, something similar, um, but we rarely think of using hydraulic ventilation in an underventilated space while we're conducting an interior attack. And that has a lot of implications to firefighters on what's gonna happen when you start operating that nozzle inside of the building, not flowing air out of the window or out of a building or attacking from an exterior point of view like a transitional style attack. Hopefully that data is gonna show us a lot more into that, but I've conducted a little bit of research on my own and I had a couple of little uh, experiments that we videoed that we wanted to show you so that you could use them in your own training. If you have a building or a training facility or somewhere where you can flow water, you'll be able to demonstrate to your own people how this actually works. So one thing that's really important to understand is I'm not advocating you to use a certain type of pattern or a tactic because we know that American tactics and European tactics are everywhere in between. There's all kinds of different ways to use nozzles. I just want you to be a, a well-educated nozzleman, somebody that understands how and why they're going to use the nozzle and the way they're going to use it. Using a fog combination nozzle is not a bad thing if you know what you're doing and if you want to use it for hydraulic ventilation or you can use it for tremendous advantages, but know that those tremendous advantages can also cause a lot of disadvantages on an interior attack, uh, like the steam production and overpressurization of a space. So one of the first videos I want to show you is a thermal view of what it's like on the inside when we flow water at the ceiling. And basically, if you look in the top upper atmosphere of the room, you'll be able to see some of the heated gases sitting there. And our job as firefighters is we want to try to cool those gases down, which makes the, the space more tenable, more survivable for our victims. And the way we typically do that is with a straight stream. So we spray a straight stream at the ceiling, and what that enables water to do is kind of ricochet off the ceiling, rain down through those gases, and cool and contract those gases. So those gases will lift, which provides more survivable space. If we put a 30 degree or a full fog pattern and actually flow water, not pencil or pulse, but actually flow water, we can create a tremendous amount of steam conversion and we can create a lot of overpressurization, which creates a lot of turbulence and moves that neutral plane, kind of pushes everything down into the room. You know this as a firefighter because most of you have probably done it before and you realize that that steam and pressure kind of pushes down on you and becomes really uncomfortable. Well, you can imagine what it feels like to an unprotected civilian. So knowing how we use our nozzle can provide tremendous survivability benefits for our victims uh, that we're trying to rescue. So look at the gases and then we're going to show you a quick thermal imaging video of a power cone or kind of a 30 degree style fog pattern and the turbulence it creates inside of a room uh, with a thermal image so you'll be able to see that. So the water stream is being applied from your left into the room and, and take a look at the flames. Even though this is gas fed it still gives you a good indication as to how this turbulence is created. So you can see the flames start to spiral uh, due to the air movement from that stream, this is a 30 degree fog pattern, so probably moving you know, upwards of 6,000 cubic feet per minute of air. 
Okay, the next block of experiments, we're gonna show you basically what happens with no fire, just kind of some, uh, a couple of different angles of some footage of us flowing water in some different places, starting off from the outside, flowing with a smooth bore and a fog pattern from the outside, straight stream and fog, and then we're gonna show you from the inside what happens when you flow a smooth bore and a straight stream and a fog pattern, and what those air movements do inside of the building and, and how they react to your tactics. You're now looking at a fog or combination nozzle, and we're going to start off on a straight stream. This video is in slow motion to, to let you see the details a little bit better. We're starting off using the straight stream at the ceiling, uh, like NIST and UL recommend. You notice the water droplets rain down into the room, and then as we move from the straight stream and go towards a 30 degree or full fog, notice the streamers in the small picture in picture. They're going to reverse and basically that room is overpressurized, and now those streamers are flowing away from that fire room. As soon as we move back to the straight stream, they go back to normal. So this is just another view from inside uh, so that you can see the streamers change direction as soon as we go full fog. So you'll notice those streamers, pretty good wind current moving through the building, and then as we go back to straight stream, they fall right back down to normal. Okay, now you're looking at a 7 8 inch smooth bore tip we're going to flow it in the same way. We're going to direct it at the ceiling and let the water droplets rain down. You'll notice those streamers just barely move. Uh, and that's because that smoothbore nozzle moves very little air. You'll see similar behavior with a straight stream on a fogger combination nozzle. Uh, you only really see the movement of air when you switch to that uh, 30 degree pattern or full fog pattern. So you'll notice the streamers inside just barely move. Okay, now we're moving to an interior attack. This is an enclosed bedroom with a fog or combination nozzle. Notice the streamers. As soon as we move to that uh, 30 degree pattern or full fog, you're going to overpressurize that space because it has nowhere to go, and you're going to reverse the direction of that airflow. The, the streamers kick out almost immediately, uh, and this is in slow motion so that you can see that happen. I'm going to show you another clip of a fog or combination nozzle, and this one's in full speed. Uh, just so that you can see how fast that room overpressurizes. Okay, this is the same setup, but now we're going to be using a 7 8 inch smoothbore tip. There are no outlets in that room, so this is shot in slow-mo. You'll notice the streamers are just barely moving. Uh, so we try to generate some turbulence and some movement by swirling the pattern in the room. And we're able to move a little bit of air, but nowhere near the amount of air that was moved with the fogger combination when we were set to a 30 degree or full fog pattern. Now you're going to see the same 7 8 inch smoothbore tip, but this is going to be in full speed so you can see the reaction of air movement with the streamers. Okay, we've moved back to the fogger combination nozzle, but now we've opened a window and we've done that to provide an outlet for that air. So a lot of times you can use this to your advantage. However, notice that when we move from the straight stream to the 30 degree pattern or full fog pattern, we're still able to overpressurize the room. The streamers have a little bit of a delay to them before they actually move uh, reversed, but we're still able to overpressurize that room because the outlet is still not large enough for all of that air movement. And now we're going to show you the same clip, but now in full speed. Okay, now you're looking at the same test, but with a 7 8 inch smoothbore tip. So the window is open to allow an outlet. Uh, and as you can tell, we have very little movement of air, so we're going to try to create some turbulence by swirling our pattern. And we're still uh, having very little air movement in that room. Uh, so we're not able to overpressurize that space as easily with the smoothbore nozzle. So we're going to take the same clip, but now you're going to see it in uh, at full speed so that you can see the reaction of the streamers. Uh, and notice that there's very little movement of air. So you are now viewing an exterior application of water using a fog or combination nozzle. This is on a straight stream right now. We're going to move that to a 30 degree fog and then a little bit past 30 degrees and look at the streamers, how much pressure is generated. Then we're going to bring that pattern back to a straight stream and watch the, the uh, turbulence go away.
So we've also provided a breakdown of all these videos that you just saw independent of one another so that you can use them for your own trainings. We've put those in a playlist on YouTube and we'll also have them on our website. I'll provide the link below. It's www.boxalarmtraining.com and on our YouTube channel, it's youtube.com slash box alarm training. So on there, you'll see a playlist that has all of these experiments kind of broken down. That way you can use them to, to teach whichever component you want to teach or use in your own trainings. But also, if you would, please subscribe to the channel and like our Facebook page. That's really the only way that we can continually produce these free training resources. So if you would, when you do that or share it with your friends, it helps us tremendously. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment below if you have any questions, and we'll try to help you out and answer them. Thanks.